Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very serious report. This is a declaration of national emergency from the report from Tiger Mountain. Australia appears to be under attack. Our nation is being burnt to the ground, whether it be by natural causes, as we're being told in the media, or something more nefarious. That is what we're going to examine today on this very important report from Tiger Mountain. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a very serious report from Tiger Mountain, uh, reporting on the fires in Australia down under. Um, for the last two weeks, Australia has been on fire all over this country in the most extraordinary, what they're calling a natural disaster um, that's ever hit this nation, I think it's an entire history. Um, so it's a very serious subject and we're going to explore it today. Um, nation in flames, are the globalist elite burning Australia to the ground is the name of the broadcast. So uh, I'd like to declare a national state of emergency because I think something's going on with these fires that um, is unusual. You know, there's so many uh, things about these things. We've had, we've had bushfire season before in this country and we've had bushfires, but we've, I've never seen anything like this all over this country. I mean, you know, even I live in suburban Australia and uh, we had to water down our roof of our own house because uh, only like about five kilometres away there was a, a, a bushfire moving in. So this is uh, an extraordinary um, you know, disaster that's been happening down under. And on the drive over here today to make this report, I mean, you know, basically the whole, all our cities, Sydney, uh, Brisbane and Melbourne, they're, they're just covered in smoke. Um, you know, like it's all over this country. So this is like nothing that's ever happened before. So I'd just like to explore, you know, um, what's been going on and some of the background to all this. Um, first of all, I'd like to look back at the recent election, um, uh, the election of Scott Morrison. Um, Australians rejected the climate change narrative. That was essentially being strongly pushed by the Labor Party. And uh, it's my belief that the globalist elite were very upset that we did not back the Labor Party and we do not believe the climate change uh, agenda, which basically involves a large money transfer um, from Australians to um, the elite in the United Nations and other internationalist bodies. I believe what's going on at the moment is a punishment um, for us rejecting this climate change narrative. Um, also, um, there's also a very strange um, land and water sale that's been going on in this country. Um, all our water has been, um, you know, um, either been given to industrial farms, often owned by countries like China and Canada, or it's, been, you know, our water resources are being misused. Uh, and it's extraordinary. It's in a time of great drought as well, you know. So this is something else I think that needs to be considered and considered the background um, uh, to what's been going on. Also, Australia has essentially been unprepared for um, the fires that, that, that have hit us now. I mean, the extraordinary kind of concordance of fires. I mean, just to give you an idea of the scope of um, how big these fires are, um, they, if they were all to be put together collectively, apparently this, the fires are the size of Ireland, the country of Ireland. So it's absolutely ginormous. Australia itself is a big country, but the fires are absolutely extraordinary and happening. If you look at the map of the fires, they're happening all over Australia. There's like, I don't know, there's something like a hundred of them, 200 of them. It's, it's absolutely out of this world. And also another cause of the fires, I mean, of course, the main cause of the fires the media has been uh, telling us is that the m main cause of the fires is um, global warming. Now, um, also at the same time, the media are telling us that 80% of the fires are the cause of arson. Now, I don't know if you want to jump to any conclusions, but to me that the cause of the fires is actually the people who lit them and not some contentious theory in relation to climate change. Now, I will admit that some of the weather in the past two weeks has been unusual. We had a couple of days, uh, at least down in Melbourne, I'm sure we had them elsewhere around Australia, where the weather was very hot and there was a very strange wind, you know, um, that I think obviously made, um, uh, was obviously exasperating the fires. So, um, you know, I mean, obviously there have been some very bad um, natural conditions. Um, and are these conditions natural? I mean, there have been accusations from some quarters that, you know, I mean, there's always been accusations that the elite are involved in, like, um, geoengineering, whether it be through things like chemtrails, um, whether it be through things like um, something like HARP, that they somehow could control the weather. Um, you know, I mean, there's maybe there's something like that going on. I mean, this is something that needs to be investigated. When you see at the beginning of 2020, um, Australia just basically um, 
on fire all over, all over. And it's, it's not over. I mean, we're two weeks in, and this could be the worst uh, week coming up. We've had some cool weather in Melbourne today, which is, thank God for that. I mean, if you know what I mean. So, you know, really, this is something very strange that's been going on. Uh, I think if you look at the beginning of the event, it was very suspicious to begin with when Scott Morrison was away on holiday. This is about the worst... Um, uh, catastrophe that's ever hit this country. And the Prime Minister of Australia is off in Hawaii having a holiday. Now, obviously, he quickly came back. Um, I think after about four or five days, it began to be obvious how serious this is. But I think it was obvious maybe before. Uh, I don't believe that Scott Morrison is personally involved in any conspiracy, but I do believe what you call a kind of deep state kind of organisation exists within Australia, within the bureaucracy in, in Canberra and stuff. And someone probably advised him to go go away during this period. And, and that's, of course, when um, the catastrophe started, because you obviously want the captain off deck when, uh, you know, you really want some kind of major act of treachery to um, begin. So uh, I think that's a very interesting thing to think of. Um, and as I said before, 80 percent of these fires are committed by arson. Um, and obviously, but when you look at media, oh, it's always like global warming. That's the agenda that's being pushed. And this is not being pushed. These fires are not just being pushed to push the global uh, warming agenda to Australians. It's being used internationally all across. Look what is happening to Australia. This is a perfect example of why global warming is true. And I must admit, I mean, even myself, when I when we had a, um, a fire that was five kilometres from my own house, possibly heading our way, and I'm out there watering the roof of my own house, I'm thinking myself, maybe there's something to this climate change agenda. You know what I mean? I'm basically a climate change um, definitely I'm suspicious of the narrative. Um, but, you know, when you're out there watering your own roof, believe me, you begin to think differently. So I think this event um, is something incredibly nefarious. And, um, you know, I'm going to divide it into two parts. This is what you've just seen is part one. So I'm going to divide it into two parts because um, I like to keep these things short. But I think there's a lot going on here. And uh, there have been some calls for, like, a, a Royal Commission, uh, even from the left into this. I totally support a Royal Commission, as long as it will investigate the full field of nefarious activity that's been going on surrounding these fires, because I think we need to investigate it. Um, so that's the end of part one, and I'll come back with part two very soon.